Hey, Drive Tribe, Migs here, and I'm with Travis Pappenheim. Travis, how are you today? Having a great day, awesome. wonderful day. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. And we're talking about the lifestyle bit here of the Concorde. And um, let's talk about some of the cigars. Well, first, actually, let's talk about you. So you work for Monte Cristo. And how many years have you been working for Monte Cristo? I've been with them for 12 years, and I'm the national education manager. And what that really means is I get to spread the love about what our lifestyle is, about what cigars are, how they're made, and really the opportune times to be able to, to smoke them, like here at the Concord. Yeah, that's great. That's perfect. Well, I hear you do a lot of traveling. I do. I cover all 50 states. Well, 48 of them, anyway. Uh, but I travel all over the U.S., so our consumers are more educated on what they're buying. But our retailers are also more educated to be tobacconists as opposed to just retail sellers that just sell a widget. Because these are more than a widget. There are more than 200 hands that have touched this tobacco from beginning to end. So we like to spread that love of what each of those steps are to really involve you. Okay, okay great. And you're out of Fort Lauderdale, which is kind of funny because both of us flew up from essentially the same area. Yeah, we did. We were both from South Florida up here in, in Rhode Island. But I tell you what, even from South Florida, this is absolutely beautiful up here. What a perfect place for a concourse. So we're like right next to each other. And where do we meet? In Rhode Island. <laughs> yes, we do. That's odd. Very unique. So uh, basically cigars are, I guess, similar to wine tasting. You were talking about how there's a, an aroma wheel and you have a palate for each one. Absolutely. When you have a cigar, a cigar can really emulate a lot of flavors in your mouth. Very similar to what wines do. In wines... The region they're grown in is very important because of the soil that it's grown. Tobacco is the same way. Each area that we grow into, whether it be Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, even on our sister area of the Cuba, which we can't really talk a lot about because of the, the trade rights, but that island is really unique and different than anywhere else we grow tobacco. So wines from Italy or wines from, from Washington State are going to be different than, than other regions. And tobacco is very much the same way. Excellent. All right, well, um, let's take a look at some of these cigars then. First one that we're featuring is the Monte Cristo Espada Oscuro. Now, the Monte Cristo Espada was the very first Monte Cristo cigar that was 100% Nicaraguan tobacco. We call it a puro. A puro just means all the tobacco comes from the same country. So having this, we now have an, what they call an Oscuro or a black cigar, very dark wrapper. And we laid this down five years ago when we created the blend. So today we brought it out and paired it up with their uh, the Reserve with this rum and we found it just to have a lot of similar flavor traits but some that were opposing just enough to make it interesting okay. and then the second one we're very excited about is the Monte Cristo Cinquenta. Cinquenta meaning 50 it's the 50th anniversary of the largest cigar factory in the world and it's also a the oldest cigar factory in the Dominican Republic. Now we work with the Mendez family who are also celebrating their 50th anniversary growing tobacco on the island. So when we put this cigar together, we wanted to really pay homage to the island and really create something special that meant something for the people. So when we built this, they went, great, we want to do something fun. We have a young lady, her name is Lucrecia. Lucrecia has been working for us for over 40 years. She's known as Mama in the factory. So Mama oversees everybody. She knows what's going on everywhere in the factory, but she hand rolled every single one of our torpedoes and all the Toros. She hand selected the four individual rollers that we're going to roll the cigar. So she oversaw them, and like a mother, she would kind of get on them if they weren't right and make sure they did it perfect for everybody that was going to be able to smoke them because it represents them as a country. Sure. So, so it's quality, con quality control. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is speaking of her mm -hmm. and the factory. It's like we want to put our best foot forward. So she did that by, by helping us build this with our group of DMI stores, our master blenders, okay. blending the, the tobaccos right making sure they taste good, and then she made sure the quality was there. So every time you grab one, you cut it, you light it up, it'll have a perfect draw and a perfect burn every single time. Can you, can you tell the viewers um, that are kind of new to cigars uh, what the differences are in cigars? Obviously you have length, uh, the flavor, or uh, the draw, I guess you would say, and then also um, the fullness, if you could go over that. Yeah, the, when we're looking at cigars, like this cigar here, is a 52 ring gauge. The ring gauge is nothing more than the girth or the width of that cigar. The girth, 52 ring gauge, is based off a 64 of an inch. So 52, 64 of an inch in diameter. The length is nothing more than your length in inches. This is a six inch cigar. Seven inch would be a, like a Churchill. Okay. Robustos are typically gonna be your five inch, which is one inch shorter than what I'm holding in my hand here. 
When it comes to cigars, the, the girth of the cigar creates more of the body level because 60 to 80% of your flavor profile comes from the wrapper alone. That's what a large majority of people, when they enjoy a cigar, they're enjoying those flavors. The body is nothing more than how much of, of that nicotine will affect your system, how much of that, that will get to you. And those are put into the fillers. So when we build the filler leaf, that's where we put the, the strength of the cigar. So balancing them like a, like a very good steak. You have your steak, that's the wrapper. But then your accessories that really help tie it all together, that's your filler. So when we build a cigar, it's not only the leaves that we have to make sure they're done properly, it's creating a combination that's right, building the cigar, and then in the future, as crops change every year, we wanna make sure that the tobacco and everything, the cigar stays exact same flavor profile if it's an ongoing uh, cigar like this one here. This is a, a regular production, this is a very limited production. The flavor should, when you're talking length and girth, mm. when you have a smaller ring gauge, you have less of a filler to help kind of deplete the flavor profile of the wrapper leaf. Okay. You have a less combination of or a ratio of wrapper leaf being depleted as you go smaller, which you have a higher higher wrapper leaf configuration as a total. So the thinner you can go, the more flavor you can pull from it, but it also causes a, a secondary problem of the draw. The fatter cigars are gonna be easy draw. They'll be very, very quick and, and very simple because there's nothing really to stop it. When you go thinner, there's a lot more to stop it because it's very thin, very much more difficult to roll. So the thinner you go, you get much more flavor, but you have to smoke them a lot slower than you regularly do. You'd have to really, really be ginger with it. And when you're smoking a cigar, you want to keep the ember as cool as possible, but yet still keep the cigar burning. Okay. Then you'll be able to pull those pull truly true flavors. Interesting. You don't want to cook a steak at 600 degrees. You want to cook it at 350 and just let it slow cook. Same thing with your cigar. You don't want to overrush it because the oils will react that are in the tobacco. What do you typically see uh, pairing cigars with wine or liquor? There's no perfect pairing for each individual person. What pairs perfect for me may not work perfect for you. It may not work perfect for somebody else. We all have different palates. We've grown up eating different foods. We've enjoyed different things over our life that we've appreciated, but that may not be me. So as you pair these, there's no right combination, but it's about the, the adventure of trying it. So if you start with a body for body level, bigger body level uh, uh, liquor with a higher alcohol content, go with a bigger bodied cigar. If you go with something dark, like a stout beer, you'd want to go with a darker cigar because that's going to give you the rich flavors like the beer is going to give you a rich flavor. So similar to wine pairing where you don't want something overpowering, where you might go with a white with maybe a fish or a chicken or something like that. That way, if you went with a red, it might overpower the flavor of the food you're eating. So you want a good match. That's what you're saying with the uh, spirits. Correct. With, with your spirits, even your beers, try and stick body for body. Okay. But do you just have to do spirits and beers? No, I've done, believe it or not, I've done things with sodas. I've done chocolate pairings, which are absolutely phenomenal for those guys that are like, oh, chocolate, really? Wait until you try it. Do a nice milk chocolate or a 72 cacao or 80% cacao chocolate and match it up with that cigar and do just a little bit of chocolate, smoke the cigar, you'll find the flavors in the cigar pop. Also the flavors in the chocolate start to pop out a little more, become a little more predominant. Right. So got chocolates, we've done um, candies, fruits. You can pair a cigar with virtually anything that you can ingest. So there's no, no limit to what you wanna try. And we're waking the, the premium cigars that, that you guys are willing to buy and try with them. I think you find there's some good combinations out there. So typically though, when you see somebody smoking a cigar, they're usually pairing it with um, cognac or rum or wine. Are those usually the three? Or I know you just said that you could pair it with anything, but typically, what do you say? Whiskies are really big. Whiskey. Whiskies, bourbons are, are real big right now. Uh, rums have always been good because sugar coming from the island, a lot of times the sugar from that island will help marry up with it. Like if you go a Dominican rum and a Dominican cigar, you probably have a pretty good pairing because the soils are they're growing out of the same soil have a lot of similar traits. And then your rums, are you doing a, a grain sugar or are you doing the molasses? That'll help really kind of change the flavor profile on it also. Um, but those two are the real big ones, and then wines are also really big. So like a Capriano, have you seen anybody drinking that and smoking a cigar? I, I haven't. If they are drinking it, I'm not asking them what they're drinking. I'm just going <laughs> to let them enjoy what they are. If they have questions, I'll be happy to answer them for them. But. Oh, that's great. That's perfect. So what else can you tell us, what else can you tell us about uh, Monte Cristo? You know, it, it, when it comes to cigars as a whole, Monte Cristo is, is kind of that upper tier. It'd be like your Austin Martins. You know, your, your Bugattis yeah. in the styling. And maybe not even so much Bugatti, but your Austin Martins, they're, 
attainable for almost anybody, but you need to kind of work toward it. Right. Monte Cristo, it's worth the wait, but it's also a cigar that's for everybody. And we make them and they're the highest quality cigars on the market. They have the best reputation and we've earned that. And we like to really tell our, our consumers, remember, we're building for the masses. We're building for the consumers that like to enjoy a premium product without having to pay that ultra premium price. I think it's a perfect pairing for a Concorde event. If you guys have not been to a Concorde, you, you'll find that there's cars of all kinds. And cigars are a lifestyle. They're, they're about the enjoyment of life and about you and that cigar at that point in time. Nobody else. When people come out with their cars, it's because the love of the car. It's, it's the love of what happens with it, but they also get to spread that love with everybody else. Cigars are kind of that same, same similar thing that we can spread cigars out. Guys will, will, or gals, and we had a lot of ladies this week that are smoking cigars. It's about sharing the love together and building that ambiance of just passion about what we're doing. So I think it's a great pairing with the premium cars, the premium cigars, kind of working together and just about having a really good time over the weekend. And it could be a good icebreaker. I noticed that if you get together at an event and you all have the same interests, sometimes it's good to break into something else to talk about besides cars. So cigars rhymes with cars that's even better even better you pull out a cigar and all of a sudden it's not who knows more about a car but oh you like cigars what do you like and you have a conversation piece so you can it's like an icebreaker absolutely and then it leads into what kind of cars do you like what do you like out of your cigars what are your favorite brands you know and just where do you like to enjoy them you know things like that yeah. some great conversations absolutely so we're talking about cars cigars yachts watches wines Rum, yeah, definitely a lifestyle bit. And all that you can enjoy at the concourse this week in Newport. And if you want uh, Monte Crisco, you can just talk to uh, Travis. Or you can call me because apparently I like live right next door to him. So Yeah, we're, we're, we're right next to each other. I can always answer questions if you get them too. Right. But they're available at any of your local retailers. And we invite you to go out and try them. And looking forward to seeing you guys tonight or in the future at one of, our, one of the concours around the country. Well, I have tried some of your cigars since I've been here, and it's great. Um, it's very enjoyable. I don't smoke cigars that often, but at an event like this, it's, like we said, a perfect pairing. So, Well, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet each other and find out we're neighbors in Rhode Island without the cigar. How strange is that? Guys, please enjoy our cigars. We know we do a great product. We look forward to you trying them, and we look forward to seeing you. Until next time, we'll see you on Drive Tribe.